Hi everyone, Sean from Plastic Star Wars. In this video, I'll be talking about all things Hoth, which basically covers all the model kits that I have to date that has something to do with the Hoth scenes from The Empire Strikes Back. Starting with this old NPC Adat Walker, or more commonly referred to as AT-AT these days, Whichever term you use, it's fine, it's the same thing, it's just that I grew up in the 80s and um, from what I remember, it's always been called the ADAT back then, so it's just drilled into me, that's all. So back to the model, this is a great, great looking model and you would not believe that it came out so long ago because it looks just as good today and it holds up really well, it's proportionate to the screen model and it's got pretty good details all around. I believe this is a 1 to 100 scale, so it is slightly bigger than the Bandai, the newer Bandai kit. It also comes with accessories such as two snow speeders as well as two rebel um, gun turrets. I did not use the gun turrets in this diorama because I thought there was already too much going on. Even though I used them before in the previous build, I actually built this kit sometime in the early 90s um, but I didn't really do a good job back then so I decided to rebuild it a couple of years ago and now I'm a lot happier with the end result. Now one of the things that will give this away as an older model kit uh, are the raised panel lines but if you are a more advanced modeler you can actually um, send them off and rescribe new lines which I didn't do in my case because I'm just an amateur. Uh, here's a closer look at the speeders. I've made one of them in flight um, with a tow cable attached to one of the walker's legs and the other in a crashed position where it's about to be stepped on by the walker. For the downed speeder, I had to modify the canopy to make it appear open and um, I had to drill out quite a bit of plastic to, to make it look convincing. As for the smoke, it is just um, some cotton that's painted black. For the speeder in the air, it is held in position by a light gauge wire that is attached to one of the rear legs of the ADAT. It gives the impression that the speeder is in flight when it is actually being held on to by the wire. The only downside to this trick is that if you move the model around, the speeder is going to be bouncing all over the place. Now one of the things that I did um, when I was rebuilding this edit was to add in an LED to the, the cockpit um, or the head of the walker so that it looks a little bit more alive and um, I didn't want the wires to be running all the way through to the base so I decided to make the head removable by means of magnets and simply just install a single LED unit that's powered by a flat um, LR2032 battery. Now this is the first of my two Bandai Imperial Walkers. It's referencing one of the scenes in the movie where the walker has just been downed by Rogue 3 and seconds before being blown up by the rebels. Now I know that there isn't an ATST uh, visible in that scene, but they were there. Um, so I decided to put in one of these scout walkers uh, just for visual interest. Uh, here's a picture of me trying to reference the posture of the fallen walker. Um, this photo is from the book Star Wars Chronicles. And I had that since the 90s, it's like my go-to source for quite a few references but these days the internet has even more um, content out there so I haven't been using this book as often as before. Here's a closer look at the model. It is very detailed as to be expected of Bandai kits. Although it's smaller than the MPC, it comes with a full interior with two pilots which will totally be hidden once you've completed the build. But again, that's just to illustrate the lengths that Bandai will go to in terms of detail. Initially, I also wanted to try to light up the cockpit, but I've, I've decided not to in the end because I just didn't want the wires to run through to the base. 
Now for this diorama, I had to do some minor modifications. The most difficult part of it was to open up this uh, rear hatch towards the back of the hull. And um, then I added some tow cables which are actually just some very fine nylon strings. Some of these panels that look like it's popped off, it's actually um, already part of the kit. And this extra um, detail of like an exposed panel area, that is also molded onto the kit itself. So props to Bandai for that. Next we have the same Bandai model kit uh, of the Imperial Walker but this time it's in a uh, walking position. Now for this model, um, it's pretty much a similar approach to how I made the NPC but just with um, updated model kit. So as you can see, this uh, Bandai kit uh, it's just so spot on. If you look at it compared to the reference pic, it looks almost like the same thing. Now again, these are Scout Walkers, the ATSDs, and they did appear in the movie uh, for a split second. Um, they are actually the longer legged versions of what we saw in Return of the Jedi later on. So these guys came with the um, vehicle model series uh, twin packs with the snow speeders which I added to the scene. I've tried to uh, add a little bit more detail to these uh, ATSDs by adding some fine wires to simulate the uh, uh, grab handles around the uh, main hatch. Uh, everything about this uh, edit looks right. It's just perfect. I just wish that they had made it in a slightly larger scale. Because after many years with the MPC, I was really looking forward to a, a larger model. But um, as good as this is, um, I still wish that one day we can get hold of something like uh, close to a, you know, a even a 172 will be will be good enough. Here's a closer look at the Bandai Vehicle Model Series Snow Speeders. Um, this comes with the ATST as a set. So I bought two of these sets um, just so I could get two speeders and two ATSTs for both my dioramas. As you can clearly see that these uh, speeders are a lot more detailed than the MPC which um, obviously isn't a fair comparison since this is so much newer. But even then, uh, there's still room for improvement. Uh, so what I did was uh, to um, modify the canopies um, so that they look uh, even larger in scale. I had to use a drill and pen knife to slowly cut away at the excess plastic very carefully because it's such a small kit and there's a very high chance that you could accidentally uh, break off uh, like uh, too much. But um, I was quite successful I think with this process. Um, I even managed to make two little pilots out of um, blue tech. I know this is totally unprofessional but it's what I could find around me at that time and I figured that since uh, the pilots are safe in their cockpit, um, nothing's going to really happen to them. Uh, I don't think it's going to melt on anything and it's been holding up for a few years already. 
So um, I've made another crashed speeder, um, just like the one I did before. Um, so nothing new here, the same thing, I've used uh, cotton and to simulate some black smoke, that's about it. Now this next model is just a straight up build of uh, Bandai's 148 snow speeder. Literally an out of the box build, I didn't do anything to modify this because the original kit is already very good and detailed. So it's just a matter of putting it together, um, painting and weathering. No bells and whistles whatsoever. By the way, this is in the color scheme of uh, Luke's Rogue Leader Speeder. Now here's a diorama of Luke's crashed speeder. This is supposedly the same snow speeder that we saw just a while ago, but actually it has different markings because I'm modeling this based off the, uh, the actual film set and not the filming miniature, because the two of them have uh, slightly different markings. So here's some close-up look at the diorama. Um, actually, when I was taking this out for a shoot, uh, some of the the snow um, it didn't set properly previously, so some of it chipped off. Um, I think towards the front of the speeder, but it still looks kind of okay, and I'll repair it after this. So here's a close-up. As you can see. Um, this tuff of smoke is just a bunch of cotton sprayed black, so let's get it out of the way. Now, one of the first things that I did um, at the start of the build was to modify the pilots that came with the kit um, because I wanted them to be posed in a certain way. So what I did was I, I took a, a lighter and carefully melted some of the limbs to shape them um, into their new positions. It's not entirely convincing, but at a glance, um, they do look kind of natural, I suppose. Now here's a closer look at the cockpit area where most of the work has gone into. You will see that there's some uh, lighting in there because I've added some fiber optics uh, to light up some of the instrument panels. I've also modified the seats uh, by removing the molded in straps and added some um, new ones using uh, paper tape and some leftover photo edge parts that I had lying around. As for the canopy, I used the clear part that was provided, painted it and uh, took a pen knife to it to create the damage. As I was mentioning earlier, this film set speeder has uh, different markings and here are some of the reference photos to, to show that. Here's a diorama of a Star Destroyer hovering over the Hoth battlefield. This is a very small diorama so you can actually hold it in just one hand. Now, obviously uh, we didn't really get to see a scene like that in the movie but uh, assuming that the Star Destroyers were close enough to the battlefield this is probably what it would look like. 
So at this scale, um, you can't really see much of the action. So it's actually all just in your mind. Um, and I just use fiber optics to like uh, simulate some explosions throughout the battlefield. Um, and uh, I kind of like tried to add in some detail. Um, so you might notice like a shield generator there as well as um, the ion control cannon which is uh, shooting off like a, which is firing at the Star Destroyer. The Star Destroyer um, itself is pretty small, um, but I managed to stuff in quite a few fiber optics in there. Um, not as much as I hoped, but um, I think there's enough lights uh, to give the impression of a large ship. Well, this last uh, piece that I'm sharing isn't really a model kit. It is actually a modified toy. Now, it started out as um, 90s Power of the Force, Luke Skywalker and Tauntaun playset. Now I've had this toy in my collection for a really long time, but uh, all along I thought that it had a pretty good sculpt. And uh, I've always wanted a Tauntaun model uh, but I never got around to getting uh, one, so I figured maybe I could convert this toy into something resembling um, a model. Uh, the first thing that I did was uh, some nip tuck on the Tauntaun's face. Um, as good as the original sculpt was, I've always felt that the snout was a little bit um, too disproportionate to the rest of its face. So um, yeah, I removed the, the lower jaw and quite a bit of plastic, eyeballed the whole proportions and, and then uh, glued the mouth back on. At the same time, I also used some uh, epoxy putty to create some eyelids. Uh, it's very subtle work, but I, I made it look a, a little angrier because I always felt that um, in the movie, the Tauntaun looked less friendly than the toy. I've also tried to make the Tauntaun look a little bit more like a filming miniature by having the entire body covered in fur but the fur is just cotton and how I did this was uh, using a technique that's kind of similar to uh, flocking um, so I basically sprayed the entire Tauntaun with uh, spray adhesive and just dabbed cotton wool all over it for the accessories that um, previously was molded onto the body of the Tauntaun, I tried to recreate them using so-called real materials, such as leather for the harness and saddle, some rolled up cloth to simulate top. Um, for the stirrups, I shaped them using epoxy putty. I've also used that to make uh, an extra pouch. As for the rider, um, I reused the power of the force figure um, and basically just removed the torso and sculpted a new one in its place so that it feels a little bit more natural and not so much like an action figure. I've also used epoxy putty to cover up all the joints and gaps on the figure before painting it to look a little bit more realistic uh, compared to a toy figure. As for the base, I've pretty much used the same material for all my horse bases, which is primarily Plaster of Paris. And just like the Edat dioramas, I actually tried to recreate some footprints. It's very subtle and you can only see it at some angles, but I thought it should still be there. This was one of my more recent builds and it turned out much better than I had hoped. Um, I'm very pleased with this because I finally have a displayable model of one of the most iconic imageries of Empire Strikes Back. So that wraps up my Hoth showcase. I hope you've enjoyed the content. Uh, if you would like to see me post more videos like this, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy modeling.